Welcome to PodNuts Daily for July 30th, 2008. Because of some technical difficulties, the beginning of today's show wasn't recorded, and I just got from the point where I played Mark's call to the end of the podcast. If you do want to see the beginning, you can check it out at ustream.tv at, on the PodNuts Daily page. Here's Mark's call. Steve, this is basically a reply to kind of the story that you had in the uh, on your Podnuts Daily show uh, about a Best Buy service, or not even a service, it was a salesperson telling a person basically the wrong information about the anti-spyware. My story's a little bit different in that I wasn't the one that was actually in the store, uh, but my wife wanted to buy a laptop for my daughter for her birthday last year. And I'm not one to look at the sales because most of the time, if you go in there to buy the thing, even on the day they open, they don't have it. And so I really try not to base purchases on sales ads like that. But my wife insisted it was such a great deal that she wanted to go down and try. I said, well, you can go ahead and try. I've got to work that day, but don't be surprised. They're not going to have it. So don't come back with something else. If you don't come back with that... And I said, don't buy anything else. It was a Vista uh, compact machine, and it only had a half a gig of RAM, but I knew well enough that I'm going to have to put at least another gig into it at least. It just had the, you know, the, you know, the home Vista, basically, the lowest thing. But all my daughter's doing is instant messaging and email, basically, so it's, it's not a real big deal. I would much rather had XP in it, but that's besides the point. So when my, my wife was there trying to buy this, there was another gentleman trying to get one at the same time. So the, basically the salesman was trying to help both of them. And like I already said, I told my wife, don't buy anything else, no service contracts, nothing. And so the salesman went ahead and was telling my wife and the other gentleman that they really both need to upgrade the memory to at least two gig because if they don't do that, you're going to ruin the machine. You're going to burn the processor up because it's going to burn the processor and you need it. And if you burn the processor up because you don't have enough memory and it's not covered by the service contract. So if you do that, well, my wife knew well enough that I'd already told her that she went ahead and said, no, I don't want it. I want it the way it is. Just sell it to me. So she ended up buying it. Now, the other gentleman, he ended up going with what the salesman said and spent the money. I think that's absolutely criminal. But you got to remember, a lot of these younger kids that are doing these jobs, basically, um, are not doing it because they want to do it. They're doing it because there are uh, higher sales managers that are telling them they got to get this done. They've got certain quotas they have to get, and they got to sell these things. And when they sell these things, you know, either they get more or that other sales manager gets more, so it looks better on them. So do all of our friends and, and family a favor, though, if they're going to buy a system – Please discuss the sales tactics with them before they go into the store to buy it. And if you can, go in the store with them. It's probably a good plan. And this is Mark from South Bend, Indiana. And, Steve, you're doing a great job with your show. It's a great service. Keep it up. Thanks for that message, Mark. I wasn't able to hear it through this this time as I was playing it back, so I... I would have liked to hear it again, but I listened to it earlier. It was a great story. Very typical, very typical of Best Buy. You really have to train. If you're, if you're going to recommend somebody buy something at Best Buy, you really have to train your customers or whoever you're telling to just say no when they offer to, when Best Buy offers to give all the extra stuff. Um, I'm going to start off by reading some emails today just to get warmed up. I'm going to reverse it up a little bit. Eric sent me an email. This is L. Burrow in the, in the Podnuts forums. He says, even though my day job is not doing computer repair, nor do I work in IT, although I do work closely with some IT departments. I do work in service, and a lot of my experience relates to directly what you do and what a lot of your listeners are interested in. What I do is service multifunction devices. In case you don't know, a multifunction device is a machine that can print, copy, scan, fax, etc. Now, I'm not talking about the ones that you buy in Staples that cost $200. I'm talking about the commercial units that can cost upwards of $20,000. So anyways, anyways, I just wanted to relay this story, and there is a point to it, which I will tell you at the end. 
I went to a machine a few weeks back that had an error code relating to a main charge cleaner not being able to find home position. I took out the main charge. I took out the main charge, moved back move the cleaner back and forth everything seemed fine I put the charge back in the machine and started it up and it worked fine in the back of my mind in the back of my mind I thought the code will will return and I'll be back here but I'm not sure how to prevent it two days ago I get the call again for the same problem and I was a little worried since the problem is intermittent and there's nothing obviously wrong with it then I remembered that one of my coworkers had the same problem a month or so ago and already went through this. I called him up and asked him what he did. Well, he said he replaced the main charge. Duh. Don't forget the code is for main charge cleaner. So the code he's getting is for main charge cleaner. I did just that and it seemed to be just fine. Now here's the point. One, for some reason, even though we are told to do to use the KISS keep it simple stupid method all the time, we always seem to forget to. Two, don't be afraid to ask if you don't know. I know a lot of you I know a lot I'm sorry guys, this is the first time I'm reading this, so I know you spend a lot of time on Google doing just that, but I've heard plenty of texts who either think that it is cheating or don't think to do it or afraid to do it. Of course doing it over the internet is not a problem, but in my field everything is not online. Everything is not online in some form waiting for you to Google it, so you must rely on other technicians. Just wanted to share that with you, and if you want to use it on your show, no problem. If you don't, it's no problem either. Have a good day, El Burrow. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. Uh, sorry, I messed up the reading a little bit. I was just that's, just got in. It's the first time I had a chance to read it. I have to like uh, totally agree with you. Sometimes it's so obvious. Sometimes the computer's telling you what to do. I, I learned my lesson a bunch of times doing that, especially with the blue screen of death telling you like look here's the problem here's the driver that I'm having a problem loading and it tells you right at the bottom of the screen but you don't read it you know you just say oh I just gotta do a reinstall or I gotta do a Windows repair or I gotta run check disk for two hours so good advice and um, you know it's true when you're out in the field I guess you gotta think on your feet a lot I'm gonna read a couple emails here sent from Roger he says, Steve, I noticed you said you didn't like Avast antivirus because the customer has to register Avast after 60 days. What I do is register Avast right after I install it, and it usually ends up extending the license to 14, 15 months before it expires. I found that AVG and Avast usually come out with a major upgrade, like when AVG went from 7.5 to 8.0, every one to one and a half years. And when they do this they usually drop support for the old ver version shortly thereafter. So the 15-month license you get it with a vest usually will cover just about all the, all the time that a version will be supported anyways. I installed both AVG and a vest, but became a little concerned when AVG 8.0 came out, and I saw issues some people were having with it. I'm gradually starting to install AV 